since you're talking about strategies and tactics and doing things that are effective, and there's a lot of people in this room, many of which I personally don't know, mm -hmm. do you think it's, uh, I didn't hear you say anything at the beginning, so I'm just wondering if it would be good to mention something about the things that shouldn't be said. Oh, I did, room. yeah, I had that in my notes, too. Yeah, I'm mainly, I'm going to be talking about above-ground tactics here, which are public, which are, you know, usually peaceful and lawful and so on. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to touch on underground tactics as well, which are uh, not peaceful, not lawful, by any means necessary kind of stuff. But we're not going to speak in detail about underground tactics because we don't do that in public. And it takes the surprise away. Um, Deep Green Resistance, for those who don't know, is, is a philosophy and a movement and a book. And I have a review of it. It's the, the full-size sheet up there. Um, and it's, a, it's an above-ground movement <clears throat> that calls for the existence of an underground militant movement as well. To, uh, and they're sort of taking their, <clears throat> their um, mandate, their philosophy from successful insurgencies. And the gift of the Deep Green Resistance book is that even <clears throat> peaceful above-ground movements can learn a great deal from successful insurgencies and the tactics they use. And it's called asymmetric warfare. And uh, that's really the position we're in, you know. I mean, they've got all the money and power on their side. We've got all the people on our side. I'm pointing to the, to the arc here. We have most of the people on our side. And uh, we have strengths that they can't match, actually. And they just want us to believe that we're not empowered. <clears throat> so that's kind of what's informing some, some of my, you know, my ideas on this stuff. But uh, the, the idea of this workshop is to give people the tools not necessarily tell them what to do. I'm not going to tell people what to do. I'm not going to advise anyone to break any laws or do anything that's not peaceful and lawful. Um, that would be between you and your conscience. But I'm going to advise people on how to uh, work and you know, have to have some unity around diversity of tactics if they want. Or otherwise, to uh, have some tools that they can use. There's still some chairs down here. <laughs> you can come down and share the big couch if you want. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy about walking in front of everybody. You see it all the time. Um, yeah, so like I say, there's a variety of missions, mandates, philosophies <coughs> that uh, that really limit in a long, in a large way, you know, what, what sort of tactics you're going to go for. If I'm a revolutionary, I'm not going to go uh, lobby for an NDP government. Um, I'm not going to sign up people to sell green consumer products and stuff like that. So. So there's a lot of room in this campaign. Um, so let's talk about long-term goals outside of our missions, like global revolution and world peace, and um, <laughs> we can talk about long-term goals. I want, I want people to give me some suggestions here. Let's see if I have a pen. I write some of them down. What are, what are the sort of long-term goals that we are looking for? We said no tankers, but it goes beyond no tankers. Shut down the tar sands. Shut down the tar sands. That's a big one. <laughs> Long term. <laughs> Long term. Yeah, that, that's going to take more than a year. And what goes along with, yeah, you have your hand up? Uh, I guess it's like a quit our addiction to oil. Quit our addiction to oil. Yeah, that's uh, getting very long term. Um, I'd say that the long term goal should at least to some degree be towards uh, returning indigenous lands to indigenous control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's very much an overarching goal. Then. And um, you know, stopping all the pipelines as well. Mm -hmm. To replenish the areas that were affected by what's already been done. Yeah, restore yeah. those areas. Yeah, bring the earth back into balance. When we start talking about intermediate goals, and those are all great long-term goals. So how do we how do we break it down further? So if we're focusing in, say, on no tankers or no pipelines or no tar sands, um, then we can talk about strategies that we can bring to bear and tactics that we can bring to bear on midterm goals. And these might be opportunities and so on. So how do you pick goals? I'm not going to tell you what the goals are because that's a secret. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Every group has its own goals. Every campaign has its own goals. They, they, they think we're going to get 10,000 signatures on a petition. Do we have that petition? No, we don't. Yes, because we're revolutionaries here. <laughs> um, we're going to get 10,000 signatures to send to Harper. Yeah. We're going to uh, get 5,000 people to get arrested in Ottawa. 
we're going to get a thousand people to strip naked and cover themselves in molasses for the TV camera. <laughs> you know, so everybody's got their own goals. Right? Um, but how do you know what's what's a good goal? I guess um, the the normally it's like is is it achievable? Is it something you can do? It's like yeah, we could probably get a thousand people who work hard enough to take their clothes off and cover themselves in chocolate syrup. <laughs> yeah, it comes from, they could be on TV. And maybe give them some little modesty thing to wear. Um, um, so that, that's achievable. Another question is, it, do we have allies? Is it going to get a lot of excitement? Are people going to want to get in on this? Is it going to be fun? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and what else have I got? Uh, do you have a clear target? Like, are you just going to go do this in the middle of the street, randomly? I'm like, OK. <laughs> but you know, it would be better if you did it in, like, let's just pick a random example, house apartment. <laughs> you know, if you, if you did it there, um, you know, it might have more of an effect on the decision makers. And so that's the target. One of, the, one of your targets might be who, who has the power to change this and how can we bring pressure to bear on that person? And we're going to talk more about targets. Um, yeah, and are people going to actually do it, you know? Hard to get a thousand people, but you know, you worked out and you went cross country and you had a big enough advertising budget, you probably could. Um, will they will they give money to support it? And what we have, what we do, because we're not funded by big foundations and you know foreign socialist billionaires and so on. <laughs> we um, it has to be self sustaining. So we have to go where people's support is. We have to go where people want us to be. Basically, we go we go where we're put. Right? And people say we want you here, and we say okay, and and uh, you know, and if the support is there, so are we. So this is how we've been effective. We have a community action fund, which is what we're going to be fundraising for in the Art Against Denbridge. And uh, we, we use that for a variety of different strategies and tactics that have been very successful, just based on opportunity. All right, so we're going to talk more about effective strategies as well. But yeah, you do want to pick stuff that's effective, right? And that, that's going to be targeting the decision makers, that people, it's going to contribute to your growing awareness on the issue, potentially. You know, for a lot of people, media is a really important aspect of choosing goals. So, you know, we could we could brainstorm here, but it might be better to just go through this and we can discuss more. Um, brainstorming probably would happen better in a smaller group. Anyway, it's a, it's a very diverse group. And Forest Action Network, by the way, we're, we're a small grassroots organization. And, uh, we can do things that some of the big groups can't necessarily do because of restrictions on their funding and so on. I don't have those kind of restrictions. So who are our allies in this in this struggle? Um, the definition of ally, there's there's a couple different definitions that I want to run down. Uh, one definition is like, you know, the Axis and the Allies. Um, in World War II, when you're going to war, when the colonists are ganging up together. Um, then our allies are the people who are fighting on the same side. Um, it's got a more nuanced meaning, I think, in other communities. And, and being an ally to First Nations means, you know, doing more than just, um, you know, being in agreement or talking about wanting to support them, but actually going to support them, sending money, going physically, um, you know, doing the actual work. That that makes you an ally. Um, and we have, we have, uh, we can drill down here. In the, the, from the large to the small, we have um, allies in the movement. <clears throat> Let's talk about this a little bit. Who would be some of the allies in the movement? I don't have any thoughts. We'll see if I can find time. Obviously, First Nations we've mentioned. My pen's over here. Oh, there's a fatty pen. Thank you. <clears throat> Good First Nations. <coughs> All environmentalists, of course. Well, most environmentalists, I think. <laughs> I think there are a few that, that are not signed up. But Alternative energy producers? Oh, brilliant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Coastal energy. Coastal communities. Coastal communities are pretty well united. Yeah, you can call that a movement. What do you mean by allies in the movement specifically? Like, um, um, we um, let's break it down a little bit. 
Uh, we, I made a little diagram down here, which some of you might be able to see. Um, so allies in the movement are the same, the same like people who share the same goals. And uh, so that would be the very broad spectrum. Would be us and Forest Ethics and David Suzuki and Alternative Energy Coalitions and Coastal First Nations and the NDP and the Green Party. You know, we're all, we all have the same goals. We don't all have the same uh, philosophy necessarily. If we're revolutionaries or anti-capitalists or anarchists or, uh, um, or indigenous, then we might have a, a very different philosophy about what, what we want for our overarching mandate. We want global revolution, world peace, communist domination, uh, return all the land to the natives, or an NDP majority. Um, so you see there's, there's a lot of different, you know, I could draw a bunch of little circles that would represent those constituencies, those, that, that group of people. But I'm doing a little red circle to kind of represent one, which is a kind of a small subsection here. So here we have the people who share all of our goals in this big circle. And we have the people who share our goals and our philosophy in this other circle. And there might be people who share our philosophy but not our goals and they're outside the yellow circle. <coughs> and then beyond that, <coughs> there are people who might share our, our mission, which is kind of the same. I think I'm being kind of fuzzy here. The people who share our strategies. And if our strategy is to do you know, indigenous solidarity exclusively, for example, then, then we have another circle that overlaps with the with these circles and right in the middle of all these circles that's going to be our core group our affinity group our core supporters and uh, as you move outward from that little circle then we have a cadre of people who share the same basic philosophy maybe some of them are marxists or or green party or you know um but they uh, share mostly share the same goals and philosophies and ideas and uh, moving further out from that little intersection, then we have people in, in our organization, possibly, and people in our movement who share the same goals but have other ideas about where we're actually going to finally end up. Is this making sense? I've seen some confused faces. Okay, here's a question. Question. What about uh, potential allies, as in people that aren't currently mm -hmm. on board but very, like, they, it seems logical that they would be? Right. Like I'm thinking, uh, one example would be animal rights activists who yes. this should affect them, yes. should care. Yes. Yeah, and um, yeah, and it can be so opportunities for for goal setting and coalition building and so on can include reaching out to those communities and saying, look, you know, we want to work with you to raise awareness about how this is going to hurt marine animals or how this is going to affect uh, dolphins in captivity, for example, the fact that they're they're going out and picking up pelican eggs. They're raiding pelican eggs out of out of colonies in, uh, in the northern Mississippi River um, just to experiment on and see how much oil they have. Yeah, we know that they've got oil. In it. Anyway, this is an example. I don't want to get too detailed into examples, but yeah, potential allies.